Good morning ladies and gentlemen and uh, welcome to this tutorial video on cartwheels. Throughout these tutorial videos, I will always aim to demonstrate skills in both modern and old school playboats, because I think it's important to observe the differences. There are also a few phrases I use repeatedly in these tutorials, so I'll just briefly explain those now. First of them is the centre line, that's just an imaginary line dividing the kayak and kayaker left and right and it runs down the centre of the body and the centre of the boat. I also talk a lot about pre-loading or loading. There's a better explanation of this coming in the Lean Clean video that's coming soon, um, but it refers to the subtle control of hips and core muscles to place weight on specific quadrants of the boat, um, and it often therefore means that you're loading that quadrant with surface water. And finally, neutral positioning. This refers to a baseline standard of posture and muscle engagement. When upright, for instance, neutral means being sat upright, leaning neither forwards nor back, with the core engaged but not tensed. So, cartwheels. From one end to two to the elusive three, right up to infinity. Well, it rhymes. How do they work? To start off, this video at times presumes that you have a basic understanding of some complementary skills, namely getting into and holding a bow stall and getting into and holding a stern stall. Don't worry if you don't, there'll be tutorials coming in the following weeks to help you out. A common method of learning new skills is to break them down into components and this is no exception. I find that the easiest way to break down a cartwheel is into two end segments, i.e. a bow initiation and a stern initiation being one segment. From there, cartwheels really are a matter of rinse and repeat. And it also does away with this myth and stigma of the elusive third end. Because that third end just becomes the first end again, it's not some bizarre magic formula or different technique. It's just the exact same sequence, on repeat. First end, second end, first end, second end, etc. The very first thing to do is to pick an upstream mark. This is just a reference point. It doesn't actually have to be upstream of you. If you're not on a river like me, then there is no upstream. It's just a tree, or a post, or a bit of a wall, whatever, a fixed point that you can use as a reference. To begin that bow initiation, line yourself up with your upstream mark, and you will then need your boat to be sat on about a 45 degree edge, which will rise to vertical throughout the move. While on edge, you raise the bow and load the stern using that first pull stroke and raising the opposite knee. The stroke should start vertical, but as your edge ramps up from 45 to 90 degrees, and the stroke transitions from a pull into a push, the paddle shaft should cross the centre line entirely and become basically horizontal. It may even appear that both blades are now on the water's surface, but the only blade that is applying positive downward pressure is the same blade the stroke started on. In this example, the right. From here, it's a matter of maintaining that positive pressure on the same blade and using the core and knees to drive the bow down, all the while maintaining a neutral position. Your boat is now in a rotational motion with the volume of the bow in its current trajectory wanting to slice through the water and continue being rejected in that arc. 
To allow this to happen, unlike in a bow stool where you plant both blades, you want to pronate your wrists, that means rock them backwards, and allow the blades to slice through the water. Rotate your head in the direction of the turn, looking for that upstream mark again over your own shoulder and behind that rear quadrant of the boat. If you've ever seen a ballet dancer doing pirouettes, it should look just like that. The head whipping round ahead of the body's rotation and locking on to that upstream mark again. So that was our bow initiation. Moving on to our stern initiation. From this point, allow the stern to fall. You may wish to lightly skim the surface with the offside blade, as this can offer some stability, but it also has disadvantages, as we'll discuss shortly. The crucial thing here is that as the stern falls, you must be looking ahead to that upstream mark and pre-rotating your body in anticipation of repeating your bow initiation. From here on out, it's a matter of simply repeating the same sequence. One notable exception comes in the role of the paddle during this subsequent bow initiation, and all of the subsequent bow initiations, where the first time round, that initial pull stroke was pre-loading the stern to generate power for the move. This time round, our boat is already carrying rotational momentum. It doesn't need any more. This gives us a choice. Either we can repeat our bow initiation strokes exactly as before, which will actually counteract the falling bow and slow us down, or we can allow the first portion of the stroke, i.e. the pull, to slice the water rather than gripping it, choosing instead to focus on that positive pressure push stroke. This will conserve our boat's rotational momentum and transition it into the next sequence of ends. Now for some general pointers and common errors. It's not unusual to see people attempting to generate power for cartwheels by drastically throwing their body weight backwards and forwards. This does, of course, generate power, but it is very uncontrolled power. The aim when cartwheeling is to maintain as neutral a core position as possible. Imagine your body is like the axis or center point of a circle. And focus instead on rotating your head to lead your body's rotation, um, which in turn leads the boat's rotation. And remember that remaining neutral relates to the core and leg muscles as well. For instance, pulling the knees up sharply towards the chest when on the stern end may cause the boat to topple over on top of you. But equally, having too little muscle tension while on that stern end will cause the boat to flatten out. I also said that we would come back and talk about paddle strokes on the stern end. So here goes. As I said, you may want or even find that you need to place a stabilizing pull stroke or as the stern falls into place. The disadvantage to this is that it allows less time for you to pre-rotate and set up for that next bow initiation. But it does have the advantage of guiding the direction of those cartwheels and keeping you aligned with your upstream mark. A significant factor with cartwheels is the type of boat you use. Where old school boats tend to offer a smoother slicing experience, modern boats with all their volume centered around the paddler tend to be bouncier or poppier. At the same time, the length of old school boats might mean that they will be slower to rotate where the modern playboat will rotate on a dime. I really hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial video. I hope it was informative. Um, and please leave a comment suggesting something else you want to see a tutorial on um, or something else that you'd like to see a video made about. 
yeah, thank you very much for watching. Out on the beautiful... Oh, you're filming this. Oh. I was assuming you were taking it. You're going to make a selfie selfie. Whatever. <laughs>